In a free market, what should be the limits of what you can own as to maximize liberty? With the abolishment of slavery, we understood that human life should not be subject to being property. Does this extend elsewhere? And how could we justify either position rationally? My foremost interest would be land in an economical sense, that is, land mass and natural resources. Doesn't complete procurement of land trespass on the freedom of future generations? I think it is pretty clear the radical viewpoint in either direction leads to bizarre situations. In short, where do we draw the line and how do we justify this? That's from Richard. Hello, Richard. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Thanks. And you? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, can you pretend that I'm a woman for a moment? Yeah, sure. Okay. I would like for you to make the case to me, Richard, what are the limits of my ownership of my own vagina? What? To maximize sexual access for men, what should be the limits on my own vagina? In other words, who, who could own my vagina and use it as they see fit to maximize sexual access for men? I would say that we have uh, uh, two different uh, like uh, ways to view at this. And uh, one would be uh, in a pragmatical sense, if, if uh, the goal is to maximize the amount of men who get laid, then maybe you shouldn't have uh, the freedom of your vagina. But uh, if we look okay, at it... Okay, so then, uh, then I would be, uh, the government would uh, tell me um, who I must have sex with in order to maximize sexual access for men. Right, right. If we look so at that would be institutional like, rape for the sake of some particular end that would be beneficial, I guess, to people who would be yeah. satisfied with that ghastly form of interaction, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not advocating of, of it, for sure. But, um, well, but, but I'm, I'm not saying that you are with regards to this, but yeah. vaginas clarify, you know? Yeah. Vagina cuts through, it clarifies, it captures, <laughs> right, sorry, that's Gordon Gecko. But, um, um, so, but vaginas really help us to understand property. Yeah, okay. Right, they are, I guess, emerging from Plato's cave is like mulling over the vagina. Mm -hmm. And um, so, if women are to have exclusive and unrestricted self-ownership over their own vaginas, because to advocate anything other than that would be to advocate rape of some form, then we see that when it comes to self-ownership of vagina, there is no pragmatic limit by which that should be diminished, right? Of course, of course. I'm, I totally agree with that, yeah. Okay, so why, and I've, I've often thought this, um, I guess starting as a teenager, why isn't everything a vagina then? When it comes to property, or just thinking about force, yeah. why isn't everything a vagina? Why can't I mate with my own electrical sockets? I've tried! Yeah. And don't get me wrong, it isn't, it's fun. It makes me look like a cyborg having an orgasm in the new Battlestar Galactica. Ooh, geek reference, 101. But why do we have a rule of property for a vagina, and then somehow it's different for men's stuff? Well, um... I guess if we go back in time, as, as I mentioned with the slavery, uh, if you ask the average, average citizen of that time, they wouldn't really uh, hesitate in saying that slavery was like natural, I guess. And uh, so it was possible to own another per person, right? And I would say that we, we uh, realized that that was that was uh, nonsense and uh, we changed that yeah because that was a um an artificial division with regards to self-ownership yeah, right so yeah, some right. people got to own themselves and other people didn't yeah, right right so here that was because of a lack of consistency and universalism with regards to property rights and a moral crusade that was important as well um so so it, it, with regards to so what we want is more consistency with regards to property rights and again if a woman has exclusive and permanent ownership over her own vagina that's the basis of a property right why wouldn't we extend that to everyone um well um if, if we keep on this track but like uh, after slavery uh, we understood that everyone should be free right uh, and then but we still are able to own animals, right? And uh, no one would 
really question that today, or most people wouldn't question that today. But we we still have to to make that justification, right? We still have to say, uh, okay, uh, we should probably not be able to own animals, or we should probably be able to own animals because this is why. Uh, in a in a. I'm sorry, I, I don't follow. Can you just try and encapsulate this? Are you saying that? To own animals is morally equivalent to owning human beings. Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. I, I'm just trying to to play by that rationale, right? Um, but you're not responding to my argument, Rich. Okay. Right. So you're talking about the limits of what you can own. Why shouldn't there be the limits over what you can own? And I put forward the argument from vagina, mm. the vagina argument, mm. right? Mm. And you now going off into some other thing rather than responding to what I'm saying. Okay. If there's no limits over what a woman can do with her vagina, mm. right? I mean, e even let's say Amy Schumer, right? <laughs> there's no limits to what a woman can do with her vagina if she has um, the the perfect perpetual right of self ownership with regards to her own vagina. Mm. Then that's an argument that says there should be no limits of what you can own. So I, you, you said in the free market, what should be the limits of what you can own? Mm. And I said, okay, well, what about vagina? You said, well, there's no limit to what you can own as far as vagina, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have a problem, which is that you've proposed self-ownership that has no limit. So if you've proposed, the you've proposed the image, sorry, you've proposed that there should be limits to self-ownership. And I've given you an argument as to where you've agreed there should be no limits to self-ownership. Mm -hmm. So now you have a problem. Going into slavery doesn't help you, right? This is just debating 101, right? So you have the problem, which is you have to say either that a woman should not have exclusive control over her vagina, which we both, of course, would, uh, that this is a false argument. A woman should have complete ownership over her vagina. It's a means of production. You can't socialize it, even if you're a communist, right? So that's one. We, we've discarded that. So the woman has no limit over the ownership of her own vagina. Mm. And so now you have to create two separate categories of property rights. One, vagina-centric, woman has complete control over her vagina, and another one, which is something else where there is less control or a limitation of control. So all, already you have a challenge, right? Because you're either going to say, well, there should be no limits of what people can own because vagina, mm. or I'm going to create two separate categories, one for vagina and associated ownership, and another one for something else, which yeah. seems to me overly complicated and um, uh, Occam's razor should deny. And by the way, just for those who want to know, um, we won't get into this here, but there's a, a video on the channel called Does Morality Apply to Animals? Moral Categories Explained. Uh, so if people want to know where I stand as far as animal rights go, they can go there. But um, so, so going off into animals and slaves, like you're not actually dealing with the vagina argument. <laughs> okay, right, right. Um... What I, what I tried to do was rather like uh, lift the idea that there is a need for... I was going to say it could be considered a Kantian argument, but you'd have to mispronounce it. But sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, so let, let's, let me give an example, for instance. Um, I often think about like the, the person who, who wants to completely go off the grid, right? And uh, if we follow like social contract rules as or social contract thinking um, I would uh, like why would I enjoy like why would I sign a social contract that basically uh, removes my right to 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 um, okay Richard walk around Richard, yeah. Richard what are you doing do Where do you go? Like, okay, we've gone to animals, we've gone to slavery, now we're going to live in the woods in some sort of social <laughs> contract. What are you doing? Where are you going? Do you not know how to respond to what I just framed? That is where the argument needs to go next. You proposed a limits on self-ownership. I gave you an example where there are no limits on self-ownership. Uh -huh. And now you either have to split self-ownership into two, one which you can have limits on and one in which you can't, or you have to accept that there should be no limits on self-ownership or property rights. So I don't know. I'm not going to follow you into the woods because that's not where we're, you know, we're playing tennis and I don't want to go to the woods. Okay. Okay. Do you understand the point that I'm trying to make, right? Yeah. Definitely. You said there should be limits. Vagina, no limits. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid I've split you. I've split your argument with the gash. Okay. Mm. Kind of in the same way as, as what you're saying, like, um, uh, 
Um, I mean, we must have two lists, right? We must have one list where, where things are not able to be owned and one list where things are able to be owned, right? And right now it's generally uh, the case that uh, only human life should not be able to be owned. Why is that so? Like, that that's what I'm trying to... to um, uh, well, because you, you can't split property into two categories. Okay. At least if you if you do, you have to have very, very good reasons, right? Like you can split lizards and mammals into two categories, but that's because cold-blooded and all that kind of stuff, right? So if you're going to say human beings can't be owned, it's for the basic reason that for human beings to be owned, there must be human beings owning them, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to sell a human being to a centipede or a chipmunk, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for human beings to be owned, you have to split human beings into two categories, mm -hmm. those who have complete self-ownership and those who have no self-ownership. Mm -hmm. And unless you can find a compelling reason as to why you, you know, entities should not be needlessly multiplied is one of the basic principles of rational thought. Mm -hmm. And this is why you don't have a category of uh, lizard, which is, you know, I don't know, blinks slightly more frequently. But it's just not like, it's no particular reason to, to subdivide it to that degree. Mm. And so, given that entities should not be multiplied beyond what is necessary, dividing human beings into those who have self-ownership and those who have no self-ownership without a clear biological reason for that is to create contradictory concepts of self-ownership for exactly the same species. By just saying, these two, war like, m mammal is warm-blooded, but these two warm-blooded things are somehow opposite. Well, the biologist would say, no, human beings have self-ownership. Ah, but here's a category of human beings which has no self-ownership, but in fact can be owned. It's like, well, then we have two categories of self-ownership for the same species, which is not good. Uh, what, what would we then do about, like, if we accept that, uh, say, uh, I accept that with the... No, no, that's, that's not an if, point. dude. That's not how debate works. I'm not pitching an opinion. Star Wars is better than Star Trek. Okay, well, if we accept... This is an argument, right? Yeah, I mean, you, of you course. You can't say, well, if we accept that, like it's a choice, right? Yeah, but, two and two make four. Okay, I'm willing to accept that conditionally. It's like, no, that's not, not how it works, right? But say, say we had a system that ran the world like that. Like, you should be able to own everything, right? Um, like, th there are... Many things today where, where people own land um, from, from the remnants of aristocracy, right? Should we remove that right for them to, to own land because they procured it uh, invalidly? Or do, do you follow what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so we have tons of examples of how that has worked in the past. Yeah. Um, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. I mean, the degree to which um, things that are unjustly acquired, um, mm -hmm. well, they might be sold and the proceeds given to those they were unjustly acquired from. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about not multi-generations because you sins of the fathers can't be visited on the children. If your father dies in debt, you don't oh, inherit his debt. Um, or you can just pass things to the free market. You can subdivide land among those who worked the land rather than those who merely owned it unjustly. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at how slavery ended. You can look at how state goods were redistributed after the fall of, of uh, communism in Russia. I mean, there's tons of, that, that's more of a technical thing. And, you know, nobody, I, there's no, is there a perfectly just and moral answer to that? I don't know. I mean, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, the whole point is that once we're in the place where we're, we're divvying up unjustly gotten gains, fantastic. You know, I mean, that is the least of my worries. My worries is to get the concept of injustice and, and immorality and the violations of the non-aggression principle into people's heads at all. What happens after they fully understand it and they're dividing up the unjust proceeds of immoral government actions? Great. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be alive to see that, but I hope they have a great time doing it and I hope it's a great celebration and I hope it's done as fairly as humanly possible. That's not even remotely my concern. Isn't that, however, a pretty um, fun topic though? Like, um a pretty what? Uh, a pretty pretty interesting topic. Like, uh, if if yeah, we I mean, it's it's it's, no it's, it's as interesting as it's as interesting a topic as the um, you know where the liver is in an orc. You know, it's a fine theoretical thing, and I guess if you want to figure out the 
the um, the biology of of uh, Klingons or what word they'd use for a Triglypuff, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, right? But uh, I think Triglypuff would be uh, uh, too too fatty for my heart to eat. Uh, that would be whatever that is in Klingon. But um, yeah, I mean, if you want to spend time doing that stuff, I guess it's okay. I think that there are somewhat more important topics to deal with in the world. But you know, it's not not bad for a sort of a mullet over for for shits and giggles thing. Yeah, uh, and and I mean, uh, I think we both would agree that the number one uh, topic of of problem today is is the fact that the state is so all powerful, and uh, that's something that we need to do something about first, right? And I would have no say in that, but uh, like, what happens when we get rid of the state? That's kind of where uh, what I'm thinking about. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> I mean, this, it's literally like saying, you know, if, if you're 100 years before the end of the slave, end of slavery, it's like, who's going to pick the cotton after the slaves are free? Right. It's, it's not your concern. The concern is to get the moral argument implanted into as many minds as possible. And uh, we are a long way from even getting that process, uh, uh, giving that process any momentum. I mean, just the very idea that taxation is theft is something that is probably believed by very, very few people right. in society as a whole. Uh, so um, what happens after the majority of people not only believe that, but decide to act on it against all massed self-interest in the universe? Uh, I'm, I don't care. Mm. I mean, I, I, I've got to prioritize uh, what I can do with, with the time that I have. All right, going to move on to the next caller, but thank you for bringing up a very interesting topic. I do love chatting about vaginas. I mean, <laughs> property rights. Uh, okay. Who's getting here? Thank you. Um, the beard clam is my uh, is my thing. So, thanks very much, and let's move on to the next caller. 